What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Zane Investing. We appreciate you joining us today and your support. As we come closer and closer to the potential of a conversion and a reverse split, I want to take a look at what precisely could happen to AMC. Be sure to stick around. But before I begin, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to channel. Over the past several days, it has become increasingly evident that the hedge funds are doing anything they possibly can to lower the price of both AMC and AIP. As we approach closer to the vote for three distinct things. The first one, a conversion of AMC's preferred equity units into AMC common stock. The second possibility is a 1 for 10 reverse stock split, which, after conversion, would reduce the total float to between 140 million and 150 million shares, if Adam Aaron has actually sold the remaining AIP to the market. And finally, greater dilution that will allow AMC to not only reinforce their balance sheet, but pay off debt, thereby destroying the short thesis and also allowing them to engage in prospective acquisitions, some form of merger, or just a method to make the firm even stronger. Again, we are aware that there are several negative actors in the world, but the majority of the discourse tends to center on a few of organizations, Citadel being one of them. Now, there was a moment when it appeared that they were among the top funds that were truly short on AMC. Furthermore, we must remember that this is all self-reported information. So, whenever I see something similar, I should take it with a grain of salt, right? Given how unreliable it has been in the past, it is extremely difficult to rely on the information that is published. But I did want to stick with David Murphy for a couple of minutes when he said that Citadel may be sucking a giant donkey salt lick, but they are not among the top 10 reported short on AMC. In fact, when we examine some of the individuals who are the most shorted, we find that the world's black rocks are also lending out the bulk of shares. Extremely intriguing that they're doing both. However, Susquehanna, James Street, and Group 1 trade in the call category, whereas IMC, Chicago, and Wolverine trading trade in the put category. You possess both Simplex and James Street. Consequently, they hedge their bets similarly to Sandler Capital Management. So again, gentlemen, there are a plethora of businesses that are severely lacking in AMC. Some of them are, you know, banks like Bank of America for some time. They were the most substantial. You have the State Streets and Jane Street, Rip Melvin, you know. Nonetheless, gentlemen, we must keep in mind that even though Citadel isn't necessarily the most extensively shorted business, anyone with an open short position right now is likely to wind up in a precarious situation. In addition to that also, we must also keep in mind that you know, a conversion as well as a reverse split does necessitate a change in the QZIP number, which will ultimately force all of these naked shorts to close so there will likely be a significant amount of short covering or even short closing if we proceed with this wager and vote. Given that one does not have voting rights while stocks are on loan, I'm curious as to when BlackRock and Vanguard will issue the recall notice on all of the quote-unquote hypothecated shares and what the cost will be to borrow in anticipation of this event. Currently, Interactive Brokers reports the AMC cost to borrow at approximately 138.5%, but Texas estimates are significantly higher, with the most typical AMC shares going on loan at approximately 260% and the most costly going on loan between 270 and 290 and even 300% at times. So here again is the query. What is occurring right now that is driving the cost of borrowing to soar so astronomically? Now, it is imperative to recall that the last time we witnessed borrowing costs of this magnitude was during the collapse of EFT. With the knowledge that a number of tokenized shares were being utilized as a worst-case scenario for failures to deliver, it would make sense for hedge funds to continue to kick the can down the road by increasing the price. Nevertheless, BlackRock continues to lend out a lot of shares, despite the fact that they may have reduced their AMC position by approximately 50%. Given that they lost $1.7 trillion throughout the market and need funding at the time. The same applies to Vanguard, but Vanguard has not submitted a 13F form regarding AMC in almost a year. Therefore, we have no idea where all of these shares are coming from. What we do know is that the reported short interest, which is self reported data, is currently between 21 and 22%, 
and fluctuating between 17 and 22 percent on a monthly basis. However, it is also important to note that 35 percent of the float is borrowed. So, unless they are waiting on a huge number of shares that they expect to use to do whatever they can when the price starts to run, or if the actual short interest is larger, it remains to be seen if the short interest is higher. According to Jeff Tickle, you know what? My assumption is that they will not. Right. How many laws have they broken in the past? What's another? AMC, according to Dave Murphy, is aware of how closely this vote will be studied. A vote audit would be conducted if a class action lawsuit were to be filed. Currently, everybody is aware that this must be cleaned up. Even if we move forward with this, there will likely be a degree of Masari with reference to AMC. This is the polite way of putting it. Last word from Dave Murphy, I promise, noting that California recently authorized a 100 for 1 reverse stock split. Schwab required more than a week to change my position correctly. I was unable to trade during its ascent to the post-split high of $10.45. I cannot fathom the pain that will ensue when AMC reverse splits. Currently, this is not an issue for a single broker. This is a concern for the SEC. It is present, as we observed in August. Regarding this, this problem affects the entire system. Moreover, it appears that the upcoming events will be mired by a number of really troublesome circumstances. One thing we must remember, though, is that their AMC short positions are still wide open, and no one has taken a step backwards at this time. Examining the most current accessible trading data, 54% of all shares traded on the market on December 30 were sold short at the end of the year. We've seen a really large spike in the amount, and at the high end they're shorting 70%, whereas in July the low end was 30%. However, they continue to engage in this, and it's not just the ordinary shares that they're shorting into the market that they're lending out. We must also be concerned about the rest. It also includes the prospect of naked shorting and the possibility that things may continue to deteriorate before they improve. So I suppose she stated yesterday that years after Dodd-Frank, the FDIC is still unable to fulfill the minimum reserve ratio requirement. As of 30 June 2022, the reserve ratio was 1.26%. On September 30th, it was 1.27%. 13 years later, it had not risen to 1.35%. Again, the charges are that you know, or I suppose that you do not. What is the positive form of allegation? The premise is that they will be able to cover any type of catastrophic financial event if Bank of America fails due to these AMC short bets and that federally insured institutions would be able to handle whatever is coming in the current macroeconomic system. But one thing has become abundantly evident, and there is no longer any doubt in my mind. Hedge funds and Wall Street have been overleveraged, and their time has come regardless. The current video has reached its conclusion. Thank you so much again for joining us. Please ensure that you subscribe to the channel by smashing that thumb while you are there. Visit Moomoo in order to sell some free shares. We look forward to seeing you next time.